Hi, and welcome to today at Cyport. My name is Greg Andrews, and I will be your gracious host for this segment. And we're going to be talking about a few of the brighter objects in our nighttime sky. You may have noticed that out in the west, as soon as the sun starts to set, there's this really bright dot that begins to appear. And this bright dot is not a star. It is the planet of Venus. And Venus is well known for its beautiful brilliance. In fact, that's one of the reasons why it gets its name, Venus, after the goddess of beauty. But if we examine this under a magnified view, let's say if you have binoculars or telescopes, you would notice that half of it is shrouded in darkness and the other half is illuminated by the sunlight. So this is an example of what we call the phasing of Venus. Just like our own moon undergoes phasing transitions, so does the planet Venus. And there's a guy named Galileo Galilei who in the 1600s used this observation to help establish proof that the sun was at the center and not the earth, as was the common belief back then. There's another bright object that's out in the sky. And this one is actually a star. And this star is called Sirius. And Sirius is the brightest star in the nighttime sky. Now, Sirius is a part of a constellation that is called Canis Major, or in other words, the greater dog or the big dog. And Canis Major is the faithful dog of this constellation right here beside it. And that is Orion. Now, before I delve into Orion, I want to show you a nifty trick. Right here are these three famous stars that make up Orion's belt. And sometimes if you are unsure of whether or not the star that you are looking at is Sirius, then you can use Orion's belt as a guideline. So you trace out the line between these three stars. And if you continue that line forward using your imagination, it will intersect with the star Sirius. So that's another way that you can identify Sirius. When it comes to Orion, there are a plethora of different objects in Orion I don't have time to get into, but I do want to highlight just one in particular. Underneath Orion's belt are these three stars right here. But upon closer examination, it turns out that that middle one is not a star at all. It's actually this cloud-like object that we call the Orion Nebula. So let me show you a picture of that. This image is courtesy of the Hubble Space Telescope. And in this image, there's a lot of great science content I don't have time to share, but I do want to point out almost near the center are what we call the trapezium stars. And these stars um, are four stars that if you draw out how they are arranged, they look like a trapezoid. So hence they are named the trapezium stars. Astronomers love to take a look at that through binoculars or telescopes as a way to challenge how many stars they can actually see. And if we examine this nebula up close, I want to point out this other aspect of it. Right there, that tiny dark area, you see that? That's not a defect. That is actually called a globule. And inside of there, we believe that there are stars that are being formed. In fact, there are are a multitude of stars that are being formed in and around the Orion Nebula. This is just a picture of a few of them. And we believe our own solar system looked like this billions of years ago when it was first forming. What we can do is we can take a flight in and around the Orion Nebula. So the Orion, excuse me, the Hubble Space Telescope, along with several other space observatories, have been able to put together this three-dimensional flight of the Orion Nebula. Now, I talk, keep mentioning this word nebula. A nebula is, a, in essence, a collection of gas and dust out in space. So basically a cloud. But these clouds are gargantuan in size. They can stretch for several light years to tens of light years, if not hundreds of light years in diameter. And if that sounds a little bit confusing, just be sure to email me or visit Cyport and I can be able to explain more. Now, those trapezium stars that I pointed out in that picture, right here, you see there are way more than four stars, dozens and dozens of stars. So sometimes, as I mentioned, as an astronomer, um, we like to look in those, or amateur astronomer, you like to look and count those number of stars. And you see that spot right there that we're passing by right there? 
that is a baby star. So the Orion Nebula helps scientists to be able to explore how stars form. There are stars in and around this nebula that are in different stages of formation. And so because we've been able to study it for so long, it helps to unlock the secrets. We don't know it all, but we're learning more and more and more about star formation. So that's it for this particular section. And thank you for uh, joining me. Hopefully you enjoyed it. And I hopefully have encouraged you to go stargazing. If you have any questions, feel free to comment or you can always email me at gandrews at